Well, hello there, my friends. How are you? Yes, I was saying it's the window. Welcome to English Speaking Success, today's live lesson. And today we're looking at the topic of history. Lovely. We're going to be looking at different language vocabulary, historical people, historical places, events, all sorts of stuff, and a few idioms to boot as well. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, let's get this show on the road. Let's start with a little bit of this. Hello my friends and welcome. Nice to see you here today. It's a lovely day today. It's a little bit overcast but the temperature has dropped and it's nice and cool. It's almost as though there's a, a hint of autumn in the air. <clears throat> in fact there were lots of, as I was, I was walking down the street this morning, did you know most mornings I like to go out for a little walk go for a stroll along the main promenade and already the leaves are falling down. We've got these crisp brown leaves crunching under our feet, under my feet. Um, so yeah, autumn's already in the air, September. <clears throat> so it's a change of uh, season, uh, a change of feeling. So yeah, I'm looking forward to autumn. I think this is going to be a great autumn. What about you guys? How are you all doing? Let's say hello. Let's see how you are. Who have we got? We've got Ramandeep Kaur. Nice to see you. Sultana. <laughs> Thank you very much. Christine from Thailand. Hello. Um, Nisa says autumn is her favourite weather. Great. Radhika. Nice to see you. Emmy as well. Mohammed Al Fahad. Nice to see you. Great. James. I can't read all of that while I'm on the road, on the go. <laughs> too slow at reading. Loading 2%. Nice to see you as well. Chechel uh, Baloria from the Philippines. Lovely to see you here. And Chitra Ajish. Hi to you too. It's lovely to be here. We've got people from all around the world coming together. For some of you, it may not be autumn. For some of you, you may have different seasons. I remember when I lived in Malaysia, I, I lost track of the seasons. I didn't know if it was winter or summer because it was always 30 plus degrees and we had basically the dry season and the wet season. But it rained so much, I didn't know when it was the dry season. But a lovely place, all the same. Great. So today, as I mentioned, listen, we're going to look at history. Now, history um, for a lot of people is, is a difficult topic because history is something you think about when you were at school, right? It's a subject you studied at school. Um, and in IELTS, IELTS speaking, we often get topics that were school subjects like art, science, climate change, um, recycling, history, things that you you kind of think I should know a lot about this, but I don't know much about it because you've not studied it for donkey's years. So it can be quite tricky. So today I'm going to try and give you some ideas, some language um, that we can talk about and some resources that you can go away and do a bit of research. Come on, guys. If you don't know much about a topic, go and do some research, if possible, in English. So you get not only the idea, but the language also in English, right? Um, when I put out this post, I got quite a lot of um, a lot of messages from people from Egypt saying, you must mention the pyramids, fundamental in history. Of course they are, but I couldn't find any good pictures of pyramids. So we've ended up with this nice little <laughs> sign up here um, as, as a nod to our Egyptian friends. Hello, all of you out there. Lovely to see you. Of course, you know, many countries were at the hub of civilization from Iran, Iraq, the Persian Gulf, the Africa, China. I mean, 
all of these countries, right, have very, very strong, powerful histories that people are proud of. So I think, you know, I, I am going to be slightly influenced by British history, and you will see that today. Um, but every country's history, hugely important. So there's me talking. Let me show you a little bit. Let me just show you the plan for today, right? I'll talk you through this, what we're going to do. We're going to look at history. Um, so what I'd like to do, first of all, is look at some vocabulary that can help you on the topic. Um, we'll then have a look at some events, right? Historical events. Now, this is interesting because when we look at history, what do we mean? Do we mean like the dinosaurs? Do we mean um, the Roman Empire? Do we mean, um, you know, the Second World War? Or do we mean the beginning of Facebook? I mean, when does history begin and when does it end? You know, you could say these are historic or historical events, right? I mean, they're more recent, but at what point does history become history? We're going to answer that question today. We, I say we. It's not a one-man show. You're going to help me. We're going to look at people of influence like this young man. <laughs> Historic people of influence and how they have influenced us. That will be interesting. And then we're going to move on and look at some idioms. For example, if I say he is history, what does that mean? I wonder if you know that. And I wonder if you know any more kind of history or historical idioms. He is history. <laughs> um, and we'll then do a review. Kahoot is back. We'll, we, we will be having a Kahoot game to play together. So all of that is today's topic of history. Nice. <laughs> Brilliant. Some of you have got some good answers there. Um, and uh, Keith, what is history again? <laughs> I'm going to tell you what history is very, very shortly. Um, but let's dive right in. Let's go straight into some vocabulary. OK. Oh, by the way, and I should say this, in case you don't know, please check out this. Da, 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 da. It's the Keith Speaking Academy. It's my website. I was amazed. So many people on YouTube said, oh, we love your YouTube videos. And I messaged them and said, have you seen the website? They said, what website? I didn't know you had a website. I do have a website. It's there, Key Speaking Academy. Go and check it out. If you're into Facebook, it's not everybody's cup of tea. But if you are into Facebook, you can follow me at Keith Speaking Academy. You can also join the Facebook group, the Keith Mastermind Community. Um, for IELTS speaking, where we share ideas, answers to questions, motivation, people giving their results and sharing their tips to help you um, get forward, get forward, move forward with your study. And also people looking for speaking partners where they can practice as well. It's all out there. It's all happening. And um, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, not Facebook, if you're on YouTube, do remember, subscribe. <laughs> You can do that now, bing, if you want. Maybe you don't want to. Um, and if you want to turn on notifications, you can find out about my upcoming videos, which I do have some coming up. I've got a nice one on Saturday. Saturday's video is all about IELTS speaking part two. I promise you there's going to be some really interesting insights into the use of grammar in part two, techniques to succeed in part two, you don't want to miss that. It's a really good one, right? Great. So where was I? I was talking about vocabulary. Great word. History is written by the victors. Yeah, history is written by the victors. Do you know who said that? I wonder if you can guess who said history is written by the victors. The victors is the winner by the winners. Because a lot of history, I'll give you a clue, a lot of history is about war, <laughs> about fighting. Um, so history is written by the people who win the war. There's a clue for you. Some of you now typing into Google, the clever ones. Who said that? 
Mohamed Zayan says Columbus. Mm, not quite. Anybody else? Any other ideas? Hitler, power of me, is a good idea, but not quite. Alexander, Alexander the Great, you mean? Not quite, not quite. Napoleon, close. You're getting very, very close. Ah, somebody says, question Churchill. And more confident, Krishna says, <laughs> if I can get you in here, Churchill. It was, it was Churchill. That was um, Winston Churchill who said, history is written by the victors. Winston Churchill was the uh, British prime minister um, at the time of the at the time of the uh, at the time of World War Two or the Second World War. So people say he was one of the best um, prime ministers that Britain had. Possibly he was a funny man, not not funny ha ha. He was funny as in a strange man. But you need to be a bit strange to be genius. You need to be quite different. And many geniuses are kind of not very nice people. And I suspect Winston was not the nicest of people. But hey, who am I to make comments? <laughs> so listen, talking about history, um, as I said earlier, some of you may not know much about history because you studied history at school. And since school, you haven't really um, touched on history. Now, when you're talking about it, you may want to say, I like history. If, if somebody, maybe an IELTS examiner or the man on the bus asks you, so do you, do you like history? Well, yes, I like history. I'm into history, you can say. Notice what we normally do here is we, we link. We say, I'm into, min to. Can you say that? Min to. I'm into. And even more, instead of saying to, we say t. I'm into. I'm into. I'm into history. Say that. I'm into history. Good. I'm into history. Or I'm not into history. Not into history. I'm not into history. Let's try it fast. I'm not into history. Yeah. If you like history, right? I'm into history. I'm a history buff. A buff is like a fan. We use it like I'm a film buff, I'm a history buff, um, I'm a food, no, I'm an art buff. Different ones we can use it. You can't use it with everything. But history, yes, I'm a history buff means I like it, just to make that clear for everybody. However, it may be the case <clears throat> that you don't really like it. <clears throat> So you can say, I don't really like history and emphasize the really. I don't really like history. Yeah. When you're learning language, don't just read the words aloud. Listen, get an audio and listen to the sounds. Listen to the intonation. I don't really like history. And try repeating it. I don't really like history. Yeah, that's nice. I can hear you out there, out there in India, getting it right. Good. Um, so you can say that. I don't really like history. Or you can say, I'm not overly interested in history. I'm not overly interested in history. Try that. I'm not overly interested in history. That's it. It's nice. So what you've got in effect there are some really nice adverbs and adverbs just make your language a bit richer and emphasize things. I'm not overly. Overly means too much, right? I'm not too interested in. I'm not overly interested in history, which might be the case. To be honest, when I was a kid, I wasn't a fan of history. I found it confusing. I found it dull. Um, it wasn't until I left university and started traveling that I became interested in history. Because for me, history and geography 
are so tightly intertwined that it makes no sense to study them separately. But when I suddenly visited a country and learned about the geography and the history, like when I came to Spain, I thought it was fascinating. And um, I became I became much more into history. I wouldn't say I'm a history buff, you know, I'm not a huge fan, but I do enjoy history. That's the thing for me. Right, good. Let me check in with you guys. <laughs> this is a nice expression. Lindell says, yeah, history is not my cup of tea. Fair enough, fair enough. Param says the same. I'm not overly interested into, oh, right, not into, but in. Right, interested in. So let me highlight that over here as well, because that is important. We say I'm interested in something. Oh, come on, highlighter. Let me put that up there. Yep, hint, I'm not overly interested in history, so I can say it's not my cup of tea. Perfect, Param, perfect. Um, Simin, good question. Can we say I'm overly fond of history? No, no, because how can you be too much fond of something? If you like something and you're fond of it, it can never be too much, at least not in English. Um, so I think what you want to say here is I'm really fond of history. I'm very fond because it's never too much. Unless, unless you're addicted. I think the only case is if you're addicted, like you spend every day reading books and you're ignoring your family because you're reading history books all the time, possibly, but it's very unusual. Um, I would say here, yeah, I'm, I'm really fond. I'm just going to change your post there, Simin. Um, I'm really fond of history. Yeah, that's what I would say in that case. Nice question though. Yes. Uh, Yosra, I am a history buff. Thank you very much. I am a history buff. Yeah, good question. Well spotted. Nice one. Obviously, it was a deliberate test by me just to keep you on your toes. Well spotted. I am a history buff. <laughs> right, Duong says, history in Vietnam is all about war, to be honest. Well, do you know what? As we will see, history around the world is 90% war. How <laughs> How sad is that? I'm a history lover. This is nice, Janaka. That's nice. We take the in and we just change it for a. Yeah, I'm a history lover. That's nice. Or as Etty says, I'm keen on history. Great. Good. So some nice expressions there. Oh, Madame Zayan again. I'm sorry, Madame. Mohammed. History is not my thing. Nice. Let's put that one in because I like that one. That's one we've not used a lot. History is not my thing. Yeah, it's not my thing. It's not really my thing. Thumbs up. Nice one. So let's move on. And here is some useful vocabulary to talk confidently on the IELTS speaking topic of history. Confidence. That's what it's all about. It really is. Um, so let's begin with these two words because they get so confused historic and historical. His, can you say them with me? Because the stress is on the oh, historic. Historical. So they are very similar and sometimes they can be used at the same time. But there is a difference. So historic means something is important and famous. So it's important and famous in the past, not necessarily in history, right? But just in the past, um, it's important and famous. So, for example, um, last week, uh, Stephen King released a new book. It, and I think it's going to be a historic book. I think it's going to be a historic book. Right. I think it's going to be important and famous. It's not about history. It wasn't released years ago. It was released last week. 
it's about it's a horror book but i think it's going to be historic meaning it's going to be important and famous however historical means it's related to a period in history so there's another writer um stephen queen stephen queen who's a historian he writes about history and he published a book last week and it's about the first world war that is a historical book because that book is about a period in history the first world war it's a historical book i don't think it's going to be important i don't think it's going to be famous so it's not going to be historic in my opinion but it is historical can you see the difference mm. well okay let's check if you can really see the difference let's have a look at a question okay i'm going to ask you here to choose the correct word so whoops there are two sentences with the pictures so number one when charlotte worthington won the bmx olympic gold <laughs> come on <laughs> it was a historic or historical moment and number two if you look at the map we can use this historic or historical map to help us explore the city write down in the chat box number one which one and number two which one and let's check if you've got this nailed if you can ace this okay so number one Okay, great. Number one, historic. Yeah. Also, lucky girl says historic. Good. Who else? Kerry Milk says historic. Right. So when Charlotte Worthington won the Olympic gold, it was a historic. I'm having trouble with my highlighter today. The gremlins are here. It was a historic moment, <clears throat> right? It wasn't historical. It was historic because going back, historic means important and famous, at least for us British people, but also because it's the first time in the Olympics anybody has done a backward somersault with a twist, which is what she's doing there. So it was historic. It was not historical. It wasn't in history. I mean, it was literally last month. So number two, has anybody got number two? <laughs> Duh, Keith, what do you think? <laughs> well, if yeah, number two, historical. Well, interesting. UH says historical. Ah. So some of you, yeah, it's not crystal clear for everybody. There's some interesting ideas. Uh, we've also got Rachel says historical. So actually, yes, number two, if I just take you off, Rachel, we can use this historical, not historic. Because remember, historic means famous and important. Now, I don't know if this map is famous and important. It might be. But definitely, if you look at it, right, it's a very old map. Right. It's related to a period in history. It's historical. I mean, it looks like that's from 200 years ago. It's actually a map of Paris, maybe two or three hundred years ago, maybe much longer. But it's historical. It's related to history. OK, so that's the difference. But as I say, you know, that map, if it's a famous map, then, yes, it's also historic. So it can be both historic and historical can be but look at the difference in meaning excellent got it got it excellent well done guys you're there you've got it <clears throat> now um more words we're going to move on and carry on but as we do that i just need a little um a little something <laughs> to keep me going so I don't get too dry. Straight back in. <laughs> Why do I need a jingle when I'm here live? 
Um, other words, history, historian. Historian is the person. Remember I said Stephen Queen was a historian? I made it up. It's not true. Stephen King, Stephen Queen. Historically, adverb, right? Ebby, it's water, not ginger tea today. But good guess. Wow, Rakib, that's impressive. You're going to watch all my live lessons in 20 days. Good for you. It sounds like a challenge. That sounds great. So, ciao. I mean, yes. Can we say it's historic and historical? Yes, if it's true, right? So make sure you understand the difference in meaning, but it can be true. Absolutely, yes. Right, okay. So four main stages of history. So this comes to, I guess, I'm thinking of IELTS speaking as well, because some people say, you know, history. I mean, is the examiner asking me, is the examiner asking me about the dinosaurs? Is he asking about the Middle Ages? I mean, or is he talking about World War Two? I mean, when exactly is history and what should I talk about? The short answer is anything before today is history. So you could talk about anything in the past. You could. But, but that said, my advice is there are, there's a period of history that you probably don't want to talk about. And that's the dinosaurs, right? Because I think if we're talking about history, historical events, we don't really know much about any events with the dinosaurs. There was that famous time when the Tyrannosaurus Rex um, ate this pineapple for the first time ever. I don't know. Who knows what the events were? People? Well, you've got Neanderthal man, Harry, who was walking through and he killed a mammoth. Famous people? We don't really know, right? So what we call prehistory, it's probably not a good idea to talk about it. Prehistory, OK, is one of the four main stages of history. So before 300, sorry, 3000 BC, um, it's called, in English, we call it prehistory. And that's like Neanderthal man, the dinosaurs, the mammoths. And we don't have any written history because there was no writing. All we have is archaeology. And this is a very useful word, right? Archaeology is the study of history by looking at the soil and the ground. And they excavate the soil, they dig up and they go down and they discover bones, um, fossils, and archaeologists can tell us about prehistory. So archaeology, nice word. Can you say it with me? Archaeology. Archaeology. Any ology is basically the study of biology, the study of life. Archaeology, the study of archaea, <laughs> the study of the ground and the soil. I don't know exactly. I should check. But archaeology, archaeology, key, like open the door, key, archaeology. So archaeology, we use archaeology to look at prehistory. So you're probably not going to talk about prehistory. You could talk about ancient history. So this is the second, if you like, if you like. What does that mean, Keith, if you like? It just means if you like. If you agree. That doesn't mean if you agree. It's just something we say in English. Ancient history. 3000 BC to 500 AD. And because this is when really the writing began. So in 3000 BC, more or less, the first attempts at writing or making symbols to express something written down was around 3000 BC and onwards. And so we have some documentation of history. And we call this in English ancient history, right? 3000 BC to 500 BC. I mean, if you're not sure, go to this website. This is amazing. You know Wikipedia, right? Did you know there is something called simple Wikipedia? And it's the same as Wikipedia, but in simple English. Oh, hallelujah. Simple English Wikipedia. What a great idea. So I had a look at this one, right, which was talking all about um, history, ancient history. Just bear with me. 
and uh, let me show you. Guys, moderators, if you could share the link, that would be fantastic. And you can have a look as well if you like later. But this is it. Fingers crossed. Simple English Wikipedia. Um, now, this is going to be too small for you to read, I guess. But just to give you an idea, um, it talks about archaeology, with what we what I said, right? Which is where we're looking at things that were made or used in the past to learn about that time. And then it talks about the chron chronology, it talks about prehistory, older ancient history from 3000 BC, coming through to, there you go, the famous one, the Egyptians making the Great Pyramid of Giza. You've then got the Indus Valley Civilization. You've got the Shang Dynasty in China. So that civilization, 600 BC. Um, you've got in the Middle East, the Hittite people. So this is the older ancient civilization coming right up to basically, well, King David. You've also got through to 100 BC, all sorts of people. You've got Siddhartha. Somebody mentioned them. The Buddha was born here. Alexander the Great, you talked about earlier, 331 BC. Um, and then Rome, the Roman Empire, basically. And also the first time Chinese rule Vietnam. Look at that. And to the end of the Roman Empire. So here is all kind of ancient history. This is actually quite a nice little timeline. If you just want to pick out some simple events that happened in ancient history, then here they are. And of course, if you want detail, you just click. It's Wikipedia. But the beauty of it is it's in simple English. It's super simple. I love simple Wikipedia. What a nice idea. I mean, Wikipedia in itself is a brilliant idea, but simple English Wikipedia? Come on, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> so that's it. Ancient history coming back. That was the second one, right? Ancient history, obviously lots you can talk about, about events and people. Um, now, moving on from 500 AD, so BC before Christ, and then the year zero, and then AD Anno Domini is after Christ. Um, you've got the Middle Ages, basically. What we, again, in, in Britain and English, we call the Middle Ages. Don't get it confused with Middle Aged. Because I am middle-aged, right? If you're around 40 or 50, you're middle-aged. It doesn't mean I'm from the middle ages. <laughs> oh, I've had students say that before. Keith, are you from the middle ages? No, you mean I'm middle-aged. Yes, okay, yes. I, I assure you, I am not from the middle ages, like Outlander or something. So that's 500 AD to 1500 AD, post-classic. So we call this post-classical history. You could talk about that. Or you could talk about modern history. And modern history, basically, is kind of the 1600s, you know, from the discovery of America. And I know that's earlier, right? But kind of that era, 1600, going around to the, the great industrial revolution, thinking about Europe and Britain and onwards, the post of... The, the age of reason, the enlightenment in Europe, where we all became born again and enlightened, and then we became stupid again. Up until today, that's modern history. So you can talk about that. There's lots of stuff you can talk about. Um, if you're preparing historic events, go and find a timeline like the Wikipedia. Choose one you're interested in, read about it, and study it, and that's it. Good. Four stages of history. This is a bit of a history lesson. It's not meant to be a history lesson. I am not a historian. I am not an expert. But it's useful to, to see what we understand by different stages of, of history. <laughs> right. Fabio, hello. Where is your historical mug? <laughs> my historic or historical mug, my famous mug, I don't know. I haven't got a historical mug. <laughs> Saitama. Oh, Stephen Queen. Nice one. Brilliant. Good. Mikhail, thank you very much for that. Some people are asking after after Christ. It should be AC. No, it's actually Anno Domini. 
which is the Latin. Um, so before Christ, why do we have English and Latin? It is interesting, though, but Mikhail, you're absolutely right. Ibn <laughs> Hajar says, if you are from the Middle Ages, you could surely help us learning history. <laughs> Come back in time with me. <laughs> oh, very, very good. Like it. Good. Emmy says, Iraq has many historical places in Babylon. Absolutely. And you can talk about that as well. Mm. Okay, good. Oh, uh, that's why. Uh, well, yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm sorry, reading your comments. Keith, how old are you? 54. I became, I turned, not became, I turned 54 this year. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to move on. Um, amazing timeline. OK, we're going to have a bit of fun now because I'd like to first of all show you another timeline tool. And I was looking for a good timeline tool. I want to share this one with you. Um, again, moderators, if you could share the link of this one. Amazing timelines in history. I'll just show you very briefly. And I just love this. I think it's so useful as a tool not only for IELTS, but just for learning about history. Um, it's such an easy to use tool. I'll try and show you how it works and then you can go and explore it on your own. So basically, right, um, you've got the timeline at the bottom down here and you click on something. It's got, you can't really see, but it's got four, five areas. It's got government at the top, it's got literature and arts, science, and then travel and exploration. So rock art painting, and it tells you about it here. But then if you move across, right, and you can move to the next thing. I'm going to zoom in a bit, contract the timeline. And you've got the time at the bottom. Can you see that? You've got the years at the bottom, right? And if I go to the next thing, I can click up here and it takes me to the first date on the Maya calendar. I can click onto the next one, the next event. It talks about King Minas found Memphis as the capital of Egypt. There you go, a nod to Egypt. Um, and it gives you information about it. But you can also just go through the timeline. You can move across and find other things. Here's one about Moses. And for each little thing, it gives you some information. If I want to contract again, I can then move the timeline across and look and then discover in religion, Siddhartha, and it gives me information about it. Um, if I want to look at something around government and politics, Alexander the Great up here, conquers the empire that stretches from Greece to Western India. What an amazing, influential man, right? Um, here we go. There's one here about science. The Chinese system of imperial examinations instituted. Wow. The, so the history of Chinese examinations has a long history. And it gives you the date and the category, science and technology. And I just found this fascinating. You can just pick out times in history. You can condense this even more. Um, and you can bring it up to more modern history. So here you go. Construction of the Trans-Siberian Railroad. This is more modern. If you want to expand it, you can. But you can go and have a look at all of this in your own time. But what an interesting timeline to pick out things in history. So that's it. It's WDL.org. And I think the uh, the guys will share it with you, right? WDL.org. Brilliant. Nice. Very, very nice. So let me come back to here. To here, sorry. Yeah, you can see it there. World history timeline. Now, another interesting... Um, <laughs> thing about history is about what came first and I'm going to share this with you and this is from the arts and culture Google website Google has some amazing websites around arts culture science and technology um, and this is a game and if if the moderators share the post you can play this with me 
at the same time. I'm going to play it now. Uh, you can give me your answers or you can play with you. Um, and it's basically what came first. You know the old adage, the old saying, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm, the chicken. Oh, no. Oh, the egg. Oh, no. We don't know. But they've created this game and it's a test. It talks, it looks at historical or historic events and you have to guess which came first which is the oldest it's an interesting test of your history but not only is it a test you can learn a lot because it gives you the answer and the information and just dedicating 10 minutes of your time to playing this game will teach you so much and you'll probably learn one or two examples you can talk about in IELTS speaking Okay, let me show you. We'll play it a little bit. So it asked me what came first. For example, is that it's a famous church, obviously, and that's one of Van Gogh's paintings, right? So if we launch the experiment, I'm just going to share with you. Now, this might be a bit small for you. I'll try and make it a bit bigger. What came first? Oh, and there's a time limit. Oh, my gosh, you have to go quickly. So the Griffith Observatory or the Sleeping Gypsy? I think that observatory looks quite modern. So I'm going to go with the uh, Henry Rousseau. I think he's older. Yay, got it right. So I get 29 points. The faster you answer, the more points you get. Ooh. So continue. Visual art, Prosperine, or oh, that's Rossetti, right? Or Theodore Boer, this invention. Well, Rossetti, that's going back two or three hundred years that invention doesn't look that old. I'm going to go for Rossetti. I think that's older. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, what it does is it tells me the answer and it tells me why. So it gives you more, infora more information about it. So the Boer Arctus is a combination of ar an arch and a multiple king post truss design. Right. OK. So and you can continue. ZZ Top, I love them. I am a sharp dressed man. William Wyler, film, Best Years of Our Lives. That was definitely earlier. Yeah, 1946. So that's modern history, right? Continue. Betty White, again, modern history, or the Tower Bridge. Oh, come on. Oh, the year of opening the Tower Bridge must be older, but maybe it's a trick. Oh, no, Tower Bridge. Yes. Look at all these points I'm getting. If you're playing on your own, <laughs> difficult game. It is a difficult game. Annunciation, Leonardo da Vinci or the Osaka Castle? Osaka Castle must be, what, 1600s? Da Vinci, I'm going with the Osaka Castle. Oh, no. Da Vinci, 1472, of course. Oh, dear. Not very clever. So, listen. I'm not going to play anymore, but just to give you an idea. <laughs> you guys, yeah, you're better than me. Lindell says, Da Vinci, Leonardo. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, I'm, I'm going to do one more. I just love this game. I'm going to play one more. The Great Ziegfeld, that looks like 1950s, or Rolling Stones. <laughs> They're really old, aren't they? Year of first activity, 1960s. Seafield, 60 to 66, 65. I'm going to go for Seafield. Yes. 36. Well done. Get in there. <laughs> what was that? The Great Ziegfeld, 1936 American musical, directed by Robert Z. Robert Z. Didn't know that. But I remember the Rolling Stones. Right. Good. Guys, that's it. I could sit here all day, but I'm, I fear you would get a bit bored watching me play. You can go and play on your own. It's a fun game. <laughs> go and check it out. <coughs> right. OK, it's time for another. <coughs> What's this get in there? Get in there is what we say in English. When you win something, you say, get in there. It means you win. Like, Or you, if you're watching um, your favourite football team play and they score a goal, 
you go, yes, get in there. <laughs> Great. What an addictive game. It is, Fernando. You are... Once you're on there, I was on there for like half an hour the other day, and I'm not a computer person. I don't spend much time on phones and stuff, but it is quite addictive. Yes. Brilliant. Good. Let me move on. Briskly moving on. Historical events. Okay. Historical events. Now, in IELTS speaking, they often, often, they have in the past, <laughs> nice pun, they have in the past asked about historical events. And if you look at history, um, as I think Dong said earlier, most of history is war. <laughs> Not funny, I know, but it's a bit sad. But most of his, the most famous historical events, historical events are wars or assassinations, which means to murder somebody, to murder a famous person. Let's put that in case you don't know, to murder, i.e. kill a famous person or a person. You, you may remember the assassination of... Oh, come on. No. Um, JFK, Robert uh, Kennedy. You may remember the assassination of Kennedy. Kennedy. Um, lots of famous politicians are assassinated. Revolutions. Now, gosh, the Russian Revolution, the French Revolution. Around the world, there have been revolutions which are similar to wars, but not exactly. So it's interesting. I mean, again, arts and culture. Google. I, uh, Google, unbelievable. It's just amazing what they do, right? Um but if you go to the arts and culture site, and again, the link is there if you want to have a look. <coughs> if you don't believe me, right, history is all about war. Just look at this. Historic events. So they say historic, meaning famous, right? But these are also historical. But just have a look. World War I, Cold War, Vietnam War, Pacific War, Russian Revolution, Franco-Prussian War, um, Hiroshima. Apollo program. Oh, that's nice. The first one without killing. Watergate scandal. Russian civil war. Uh, the Suez crisis. Okay, okay, fair enough. The Second Boer War. It's just the Crimean War. It's just war after war. Invasions, right? The United States invasion of Panama. Um, it goes on and on. So you've got crisis, war, revolution. To be honest... <laughs> To be honest, it's enough to make you want to stay in bed the whole day. <laughs> it really is. History, revolutions. Um, you've got different crises or crises. Um, yeah, basically historical events. Not much fun. But let's look at the language. Let's look on the bright side. Let's look about the language we can use. So if we're talking about a historical event, uh, maybe you're talking about a war or an assassination. You can say it took place in, and the time, right, in 1892, for example. It took place in, and then the time. Um, or it goes back a long time. So I'd like to tell you about the Russian Revolution. It goes back a long time. It began in, or it happened in, da, 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 it happened in, da, 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 da. now I don't know the date of the Russian Revolution, so I'm going to use a trick. I'm going to say it happened at the start of the century. At the start of the, let's just say at the start of the century. It happened at the start of the century. Or it happened at the turn of the century. So the turn of the century is, ah, great. We've got it actually from Anna. Anna says 1917. Brilliant. 
Anna should know. That's good. 1917. But if you don't know and you want to talk about it and you forget the date, remember, IELTS is not a history test. It's an English test. So if you forget the date, it doesn't matter. Oh, it goes back a long time. It happened in the last century, at the start of the last century. It happened at the turn of the 20th century. Bum, 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 right? Or it dates back to... It dates back to 1970. And again, the time it dates back to. But again, you could say it dates back to the last century. You could do exactly the same. If you don't know the date, don't worry. There's lots of things you can say. It dates back to the last century. In fact, it's really good if you forget the date. Why? Because if you know the date, well, maybe you're a history buff. But the examiner might think, well, you've just memorized this. You've memorized a historic date and an event, and you've memorized everything, including the date, right? Now, obviously, if you're Russian, talking about the Russian Revolution, you probably know the date. But if I'm, I don't know, let's imagine I'm from Colombia, and I want to talk about the Russian Revolution. It began in 1917. I might think, oh, hang on, you've, you've just memorized that. It might be much better to say, I don't remember the exact date, but it was about 100 years ago, or it was in the last century. I don't remember the exact date, but it was at the turn of the last century, let's say. <clears throat> now that's good. That's really good because it's showing off really nice English. Almost better than knowing the date. I don't remember the exact date. Stress on exact. I don't remember the exact date, but it was at the turn of the last century, <clears throat> more or less. That's great. You can show off some really nice language. So don't worry if you forget the date. It's a good thing if you forget the date, because it gives you a chance to use some nice language here, right? Excellent. Success. What is the turn of the century? The turn of the century is when the new century begins. So, for example, 1999, when it changes to 2000, it turns to 2000, right? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> It's the same with birthdays. So this year, I turned 54, right? So when I turn 54, sorry, you can't see it. Let me take it up. When I turn 54, I go from 53 to 54. So the turn of the century, the turn of the last century, Thank goodness for spell corrector, because I'm so bad at typing. At the turn of the last century was to go from 1999 to 2000. Now, that's the exact turn of the century. But when we say the turn of the century, it's kind of not one year, but five or ten years. So you could say, you know, um, 1917 was the turn of the last century or the century before. You could say 1905 was the turn of the century. It's not one exact year. It's more or less the beginning of the century. <laughs> there you go. That's an easier explanation. The turn of the century is the beginning of the century. Duh. <laughs> Great teaching. Lovely. Success reasons. I like your handle. Nice. I like that. We can go on and we can say, uh, so I don't remember the exact date, but it was at the turn of the last century. 
what happened was da, 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 and then you explain what happened right now this is a nice discourse marker because what you're doing is you're telling the examiner what's coming next you're giving a signpost you're kind of saying i'm going to tell you what happened next it makes it so much easier for the examiner to follow you to follow your coherence it's a cohesive device what happened what happened was um russia da, 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 and then you explain about the russian revolution i don't know enough about it so i'm not going to try but you can use this expression what happened was so you can begin with the time when it happened what happened was and then maybe how you feel about it maybe <clears throat> so what happened was yeah but what okay right pradeep you said what happened was in the 20th century but what happened was what you want to do here is to explain what happened right so that that's followed by an explanation so so not quite that um you could say here for example what happened was um <clears throat> you could for example i'm just throwing an example right what happened was germany invaded france or what happened was napoleon um, invaded Russia or what, whatever it was you then give the explanation of what happened right it's just an example <clears throat> right focus on the English of course good hypothesizing now at the end if you're talking especially in a part two answer you're saying what happened when it happened right what happened what happened was at the end you may want to hypothesize um, because you may say, well, this and this and this happened. But imagine if history was different. If Germany hadn't invaded France or if um, Napoleon hadn't done this or if Napoleon had done this, today we... Da, 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 da. Um, <clears throat> So if this had happened, today we would or wouldn't, da, 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 da. If he had succeeded, he would have changed the course of history. So you're using here, it's a third conditional, right? We call it a third conditional. <clears throat> and the third conditional is imagining how things in history might have been different. This didn't happen, but imagine if it did happen, what would be different? If it had happened, he would have changed the course of history. <clears throat> so you could use that to talk about famous people. <coughs> um, for example, there's a famous person um, in English history called Guy Fawkes. I actually made a YouTube video about Guy Fawkes. If you check out my YouTube video about historical events, it's about Guy Fawkes, Guy Fawkes, and he tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament. Right? But he failed. Now, many people in history fail. And here's your opportunity to show off complex grammar. Um... Guy Fawkes tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament. This dates back, oh, maybe 400 years ago. I can't remember the exact date, but I think it was at the turn of the 16th century. And he, what happened was he didn't like the government. So he made a plot to take some gunpowder. Even today, we call it the gunpowder plot. Put it, and he put the gunpowder under the Houses of Parliament because he wanted to blow up the parliament, the government. But he failed. If he had succeeded, he would have changed the course of history. 
British history would have taken a different direction. We would have had a different government and today things would be very different. Wow, look at that. I mean, you're just throwing in some great complex grammar, imagining, hypothesizing about a change in history, right? Imagine if things were different. It's the third conditional. You can use it in many different ways, but basically it's had, it's the past, it's had, he had, the past of have, plus the past participle, and then would, and then again, have changed with have, would have, and the past participle. That is it. Hypothesizing, imagining. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Now. Good. Let's have a look. I'm sure you've got some examples here. Yeah, good. If she had respected, her relationship with us would have changed. Yes, good. If this hadn't happened, today we wouldn't watch V for Vendetta. <laughs> good. <coughs> good. Notice, if you're talking about the past, the event, if this hadn't happened, if the consequences in the past, it would have done. If the consequence is in the present, then it's conditional. Would watch, wouldn't watch. So this is perfect. Great. If COVID hadn't happened today, we wouldn't deal with a lot of difficulties. Good. Good. Wonderful combination. It is. Yes. <laughs> if Keith hadn't posted live lessons, we wouldn't learn as much consequence in the present. Perfect. Nice example. <clears throat> English language is making Keith a historic man. <laughs> Ma'am or man? <clears throat> um, okay. Pradeep, yes and no. It's a good question. We must always use would have third conditional. Yes and no. In the second part, if the consequence is in the past, yes, would have. But if the consequence is in the present, just would. It's mixed conditionals. We can mix up conditionals. If Einstein had not been born, we would be still, we would still be in the dark ages. Yeah, nice. We would still be, I would change the position there of your still, right? In the adverb. Um, and for some reason, we talk about the period of time in the plural. Remember we said the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages. If Einstein had not been born, we would still be in the Middle Ages. Yeah, brilliant. Good. Lots more examples there, guys. Keep practicing. Really, really good. Nice. I'm going to move on. Picks. Oh, OK. Time for a little quiz for you. Guess the historic event. Some of these events are also historical. I think most of them are historical, but they're historic because they're famous. So I'm going to show you a picture of four, no, six, six, six historic events. Can you guess the event? Now this will test this will test us. This will see who are the history buffs and who are not overly interested in history. <laughs> okay, that's the task. Guess the historic event. You can write down in the chat number one, ba ba ba, number two, ba ba ba. And here we are. Let me show you the the, the historic events. Are you ready? I'll give you a minute, then I can have some water. There we go.
So the question is, what are these historic events? Okay, brilliant. I like that music. Sunset and beaches. <clears throat> so let me share some ideas with you, some of your answers, and let's um, let's have a look. I'll just share some of your answers first, <clears throat> if I can. Can I? Or maybe I can't. Ah, it won't let me. Why won't it let me? Come on. interesting it's not letting me <clears throat> let me try here no nope, I'm gonna have to take the picture off let me take the picture off so number four first on the moon okay we've got uh, Goxian says Martin Luther King speech was number two um, what else have we got Apollo Prefect, okay. Number two, World War Two. Number three, Napoleon. Hmm. I wonder if I can do this. Let me try this, historical events. Let me take this up into the corner. Uh-huh. Ah, there you go. can do that so that we know what we're talking about. Apollo moon reach, number four. What else have we got? Number three, French Revolution. Number six, USA. Yeah, but what? Come on. Number six, oh, Abraham Lincoln. What, is, is he the man shooting somebody? Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Tandy Match. Tandy Match? Do you mean March? Gandhi from India. Number one, Alexander. Number four, Armstrong. Okay. Dandy Marsh. Do you mean March? <laughs> Number three, Napoleon. Okay. Number four. For Neil Armstrong's first steps on the moon. Right. The only one that's not quite there is number one. <clears throat> so let me... How can I show you this so you can see the pictures as well? Ha! Huh. I'm stumped. I wonder how I can show you so you can see the pictures as well. I know. Let me do this. Technology is amazing, isn't it? Right, bear with me. Be patient, my friends. I think we can do it like this. I think I've got a solution. I'm a solution. OK, here we go. I can take that off because I've got it here. So guess the historic event. Number one. <laughs> Nobody got number one. It was signing of the Magna Carta. Now, if you're not British, you're probably thinking, what on earth is the Magna Carta? The Magna Carta was signed, I can't remember the exact date, but it was around the 11th century. I think it was 1066, actually. And the Magna Carta was where the king at the time, and I can't remember exactly who the king was. Was it King John? I think so. He signed basically the first constitution in Great Britain. So the Magna Carta was like a constitution, the, the, the foundation of the law for present day Britain. Number two, Martin Luther King speech. I am a, I have a, I am a dream. I have a dream. 
I have a dream. Number three was indeed the French Revolution. You could just about make out the flag. That's a nice phrasal verb. To make out is to just be able to see. It's not clear, but you can just see. You can just make out the French flag. But that's a classic picture, right? With the flag and the, the, the not the peasants, but the people fighting and the soldiers on the other side. Number four, landing on the moon, um, Neil Armstrong. Number five, Gandhi. You're right. It was Gandhi's salt march. March, as in walking. It was a walk, but when we talk about soldiers, soldiers don't walk, soldiers march. So in English, we called this the salt march um, because they were walking like soldiers with determination to, um, to, to steal the salt. It wasn't stealing, they were taking the salt to tell the British to go back home. It was about time. Number six, the, it was Abraham Lincoln. It was indeed, it was the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Do you remember assassination? To murder, to kill, assassinate, the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. All of these are historic events. Okay, good. Enough of that, historic events. I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna have a, spend a little bit of time next um, looking at, well, historical people. Not historic, but historical people. Talking about influential people in history. Um, so who has been influential in history? Who do you think is an influential historical person? Maybe Abraham Lincoln, maybe Gandhi, maybe Neil Armstrong, possibly, right? I, before you answer, or as you answer, I'm going to show you a quick video of what the people on my Facebook group said. I asked everybody in the Facebook group, you know, who has been an influential historical person? Um, by the way, do remember, if you haven't joined the Facebook group, go to Facebook, check it out. It's Keith's Mastermind Community for IELTS Speaking. You can join um, and come and participate in these discussions. So let me show you what you said and a few of my comments about it at the same time. Um, it was very interesting to see. And I'll just take a couple of minutes and show you what you said about influential historical figures. Have a look. So let's have a quick look at some of the historical figures that have had a strong influence on you. People that have had a strong sway on you. Right, we've got, first of all, Steve Jobs. Right, of course, very influential, uh, complete genius, the guy from Apple. Ramanujan, I'm going to confess my ignorance. I'm not sure who that is. Sorry. Schlimbo says Winston Churchill, but not for his inspiring speeches, but for his de sheer determination. What a nice collocation. Sheer determination. Lovely language. He must be one of the most famous Britons of the 20th century. Yes, indeed, I agree, actually, yes. <laughs> Are you trying to be like Churchill or just admire him? Well, remember, we're talking about people who have a strong influence. It doesn't mean that you like them or you admire them, right? Just that they were influential. So you could talk about a, a lot of different kinds of people. Um, so sheer determination. I also said incredible determination. Very nice. Great. Who else? William Shakespeare. Well, what, the, the poet that every British schoolboy hates, but a lot of British adults love. We come to love him once we can start understanding him. It's very difficult English. President Ho Chi Minh, right. Patriotic leader of Vietnam wholeheartedly dedicated himself to the country. Another lovely collocation, wholeheartedly dedicated himself to the country. Nice, Hong An, great. We've got, um, this is a tricky question. Okay, I don't have anyone in mind, only my mum. Now, your mum, okay, Florence Nightingale, yes, historical figure. I don't think you can say your mum is a historical figure. Um, unless 
I mean, historical figure does mean somebody in history who really has some kind of fame or is well known or stands out. Um, you know, otherwise I could say my granddad was a historical figure, but he wasn't really. So I think be careful of using your family. I think you need to go much wider. Um, now, Sarah says, surprisingly, I can't think of anybody. Still, I study economics. I could name Adam Smith and John Maynard Kilms. Keynes. Yeah, the invisible hand, right? All of that. Great. Nice. Good. Um, who else? It's an absolute million dollar question. But who is your answer? Right, but I'm not sure who the answer is there. Sorry, can't get it. I must say Siddhartha Gautama, the founder of Buddhism. Right, yeah, absolutely. I firmly believe, another good collocation, I firmly believe that only, not only me, but many people have been motivated um, to overcome challenges in life. Absolutely. Who else have we got? Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. He's the founder of modern Turkish Republic. Interesting, great. Um, Cal Calton Bourne and Ola Grimsby due to their vast knowledge related to manual therapy. I didn't know that. Interesting. Napoleon Bonaparte. Interesting, Sophia. Very interesting. Uh, Mother Teresa. If, well, I think she can be counted as historical. Yes, absolutely. Without a shadow of doubt, the iconic Eiffel Tower. Oh, Melendres. Be careful here. It's a good answer, but you're talking there about places. We're talking about people. Let's see who else we've got. Um... Our history is full of celebrities, Maria Theresia, Casia Franz, Joseph um, and Adolf Hitler for the other side. How they influenced me. Great. And then you go on to talk about that by developing the school system. OK, nice. Good, Sonia. Well, Marie Curie, another one. Omar bin Al-Khattab. His life story is very inspiring. Right. Obama and Ho Chi Minh again. Excellent. So some interesting ideas to give us to talk about famous historical people. Remember, we are talking about um, people who had an influence and so people who are probably well known or famous to some extent rather than your family members, unless they are famous too. Great. Thanks for those ideas, guys. Yeah, very, very nice. Very interesting. A wide range of different things, um, different things, excuse me, different people. And obviously, people are tending to choose people from their own country's history, which makes total sense, right? So, excellent, good. And I see you've got lots of different people here that you've been messaging. Talking about influential people then, um, let's look at the language, because it's really useful to look at how we can describe influential people, right? Somebody who has influence. Um, so clearly, you can say he was very influential, it's a tricky word, so make sure you get the pronunciation right. Influential. It's a sh, shul, shul, with that dark L, if you like. Shul. Influential. Influen, n, n. So your tongue touches the top. Influential. Influential. Nice. He was very influential. Or we can say he had a lot of sway. A lot of sway. To sway is to move. It's a bit like the boat when the boat sways in the water. And it goes from side to side. Then it's swaying. So somebody who has a lot of sway is they can move people, right? This is more informal. Informal, but absolutely fine for IELTS speaking. Absolutely. He had a lot of sway. Or he pulled a lot of weight. Again, somebody who pulls weight, they, they're able to have influence. He pulls a lot, he carries a lot of weight. Pulls, he pulled a lot of weight. He pulls. Well, in the past, yes. He carried a lot of weight. Again, slightly more informal. He has a lot of authority. Again, I'm going to go had because it's historical. He had a lot of authority. He had a lot of authority. 
authority. Authority is, how do you explain authority? Um, it's your control and command over people or a field or a subject. Um, Stephen Queen, the famous historian, um, he has a lot of authority in the world of history, right? He's a he's well known, and he has a lot of command. He he's a master in that area. Stephen Queen. Everybody's going on Google. Who is Stephen Queen? He left his mark on society. That's nice. So he left his mark was his his footprint or his handprint or his impression or his thinking. He left his mark on society. So he had an impact, basically. Whoops. He had an impact. So all influential people, you're going to be saying, you know, they had, they left their mark. They left their mark on society. He left his mark on society. Mother Teresa left her mark on society, making the world a better place. Good. So those are different expressions you can use to talk about influential people. Right. Um, now, what's next? I'm just going to take... Where are we? Yes. I'm going to take a break. <laughs> Am I going to take a break? No, I'm not going to take a break. I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, let me show you here because I, I lost track of here. We've been talking about history today and we've been looking at vocabulary and we've talked about historical events, modern history as well as ancient history. We've talked about people of influence or influential people, right? So let me move on and talk about some idioms when we're discussing history. Um, idioms. Okay. Let me move in and move over here. Some things we might say are, this will go down in history. To go down in history just means to become famous. To become famous. You can say that about an event or a person. Um, so this, this whole, gosh, this whole pandemic will go down in history and it will go down in history as one of the biggest pandemics in the world, in history. It will go down in history as one of the biggest pandemics ever. Um, and you could do about a person as well, a famous person, um, this person, Let's take somebody, I don't know, this is hard thinking on the spot, famous person alive today. Somebody earlier talked about how movie stars and politicians are influential. Um, so maybe, um, I don't know, maybe I'm just taking an example. Donald Trump will go down in history as one of the most divisive presidents in the USA, for example, right? So he will go down in history as something. So often we use this about present day people or present day effects, talking about in the future, it will be historic. It's one of the... Ba -ba 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 -ba. For example, right? Something like that. So to go down in history as. The key thing I want you to notice is as. He will go down in history, go down in history as. <clears throat> so that's a, quite a common idiom you can use. Uh, similarly, with the same meaning, this will make history. This pandemic will make history. It will become a famous historic event. This will make history. Um you know, for example, I don't know if somebody, uh, when somebody breaks the world record, 
for example, in the Olympics, and you say, this, this will make history. If it's never happened before, it will make history. It will become famous. So that's the same meaning. Now, he is history, slightly different. He is history means he's finished. Now, this has slightly different connotations, but for example, well, let's take for example, if um, if somebody is a famous politician and they lose their power and they will never come back into politics, let's imagine they did, they, they I don't know, they were corrupt stole money and they have and their career is destroyed you say that person is history it means they're finished their career is finished their opportunities are finished um he's history he's finished it can also mean that person's going to die if somebody says to you you're history it means i'm going to kill you it obviously it's a bit of a joke right oh he's history it means he's you know he's going to be killed he's going to be killed but it, it's more of a light-hearted joke when it's used like that but generally his history means he's finished right um if messi broke his leg people would say oh his history that's it end of his career he's finished he's finished so often it's the end of their career I'm struggling to get good examples today, aren't I? I don't know what it is. I'm kind of blocked. Right, good. Um, what else have we got in idioms? We've got also, if I could put the clock back, I would... Ba, 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 ba. If I could put the clock back. It's basically, we're going back to the conditionals, right? But it is seen as a, a bit of a, a set phrase or an idiom because you're not literally putting the clock back. To put the clock back is to take the time to go backwards. In the old-fashioned clocks, before digital clocks, you would wind it, you would put it back to go backwards in time. But we're not saying literally, but we're saying, you know, if I could go back in time, I would do things differently. If I could put the clock back, I would do something differently. So usually you use this when you make a mistake and you regret something and you say, you know, if I could put the clock back, I would have learnt Chinese when I was six years old. It would have been so much easier. But of course, I didn't know that when I was six. But if I could put the clock back, I would have learnt Chinese much earlier. I was 30 when I started learning Chinese. It is slightly more difficult, only slightly more difficult to learn a language as you get older. The other one is, what else? Many moons ago. Many moons ago means a long time ago. Because, of course, the moon, right, is a cycle, the lunar cycle of, what, 30 days, 31 days, 28 days? I don't know. Um, so that cycle of time, if you say many moons ago, then many months ago, many cycles of the moon ago, just means a long time ago. A long time again? A long time ago. Yeah. So if you're talking about a historic event, well, many moons ago, um, blah, 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 what happened was, yeah, or any event, right? Talking about your childhood. Yeah, I remember when... Um, once I, I broke my arm, and this was many moons ago, right? I can't remember exactly when it happened, but many moons ago, I fell out of a tree and I broke my arm. So these are idioms. Guys, let me check in with you. Do you have any other idioms around history? Pooja says, if I could put the clock back, I would have gone to Canada earlier. Great. Very, very good example. Many moons ago, I was in London. Lovely. Very, very good. 
Shu Tao says, I would have learned English when I was young. Good, very, very good. Nice. Many moons ago, <laughs> I was a young girl. Yes, good. Yes. Um, oh, that's interesting, Lindell. Many moons ago, I had this dream of being a teacher too. Right, nice. Lean says, many moons ago, I lived in Japan. I visited Japan many moons ago. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I was in Tokyo. It was great. Can we say many sun? No, no, it's moons. I don't know why, but it's only moons. Nadja also says, if I could put the clock back, I would have studied French earlier. Great. There was another one up here. Van An says the Vietnam national football team made history when they became the only team to come to the last World Cup qualifiers in East Asia area. Great. Nice. Very nice example. Like it. Very, very good. Okay. Anything else? That's good. Yeah, Yosra, you've got an extra one here. And the rest is history means that you know the rest of the story so no need to carry on telling it yes that's right da, 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 and the rest is history good that's nice krishna also says history repeats itself yeah good that's a nice idiom as well and it's so true friska says how do you choose the comments well the comments are selected by the software i have they come from facebook or youtube they only show me some of the comments and I just pick at random. Um, I tend to pick comments that are following or practicing the language. I tend to pick comments that are good English, but I also like mistakes. So actually, I do pick mistakes as well. So we can learn from mistakes. But just random, really. Great. I know I sometimes repeat people, but I think because they're they're posting so much. And good comments as well. Looky, Pexy, if I could put the clock back, I would change many things. Yes, fantastic. Great. Very, very nice. Okay, good. So those are idioms around history. Good. What's next? Can I remember what's next? I can't. So if I can't remember, I check on my little slide. <laughs> It's review time, which means it's time for a bit of Kahoot. We're going to play a Kahoot game. Let's see if you've been paying attention in today's class. Um, have you really been following what I say? We're going to play Kahoot. If you don't know Kahoot, well, it's a fun game. Uh, you get four questions. You have to choose an answer. Um, basically, it comes up on the screen and you choose an answer. And let's see if you get it right. You need to go to kahoot.it um, and whoops, I'm just oh, I'm just logging in. So stay with me on your screen. You'll need either to open another browser window or use a use another device, maybe a iPad or a phone, um, and go to kahoot.it. There's also an app if you want to download it. And we're going to play the game. I'm going to give you the pin because when you get there, you see, you will see that you need to put in your name and the pin. And that's coming up right now. Let me share it with you. It's a bit slow loading today. I would say it's very slow. So let me get rid of all the other windows. I can hear the neighbor's dog. That dog has been barking for the last two hours non-stop. Poor thing. Poor me. I have to listen to it. Kahoot.it. So the pin is 5072354. Oh, 5072354. 5072354. Two, three, five, four. There's the pin. Maybe the moderators, you could put the pin in the chats as well. Um, go in, sign up, put your name in, and we will play 
in about a minute's time. In the meantime, you can enjoy the music. Right, how are we doing, guys? <clears throat> how many have we got in? I can't see because I've got to take this Kahoot off. <clears throat> got to take you make it a bit smaller. 174. Okay, fantastic. Great. You're still all joining. I'll just give you a few more seconds. <clears throat> 5072354. Thanks for sharing that, Marcella. Yosra, that's a good question about the um, IELTS test. Maybe come back. I think in our next live lesson, we'll be doing a question and answer. So save that question for the question and answer part. Right, <clears throat> when we reach 100, let's begin. We've reached 100, let's begin. Excellent, let's start. First question then, guys. I'll read it out and then you choose, as fast as you can, choose the answer. History. And if you haven't got inside, just put the answer in the chat. Last week's game against Manchester City was a blank match. Historic, historical, history, historically. <laughs> Last week's game against Manchester City was a blank match. You've got 30 seconds, or you've got five seconds now. Oh, right. This was a tricky one, but well done. The answer is historic because, of course, historic means famous and important. Um, it's not historical because it's last week. So last week doesn't really refer to a period of history, right? It was only last week. Um, it was a historic match, which means, you know, it will become famous um, and important. Historic. Well done. Most of you got it right. Nice. Hey, Lenny, nice to see you here. Let's move on. Question number two. Harry was at the top there. Shu was in second and Jennifer and Jessica third and fourth. Excellent. Question number two. He, If he blank succeeded, he would have changed history. Has, had, have, nothing. If he blank succeeded, he would have changed history. And there's a picture of Guy Fawkes. Do you remember? He wanted to blow up the Houses of Parliament, but he failed. Well done, Thirada Shilpa, well done. Reham, well done. Oh, look at that. Outstanding, everybody. Had. If he had succeeded, he would have changed history. Absolutely brilliant. I'm so pleased you got that. Vast majority got it right. How are we doing on the leaderboard? Harry is still up there. Pooh is coming second. Jennifer now in third place. OK, excellent. Question number three. Many people listen to Gandhi. He had a lot of blank. Swing, swerve, sway, sword. Many people listen to Gandhi. He had a lot of blank. Charmy, well done. 
Yosra, well done. Ragav, well done. Poo, well done. Is that Poo in second place? Well done, Emmy and Manny. Nice. Oh, again, absolutely outstanding. 122 of you got it right. Sway. He had a lot of sway, meaning influence, right? He was very influential. I love it. Well done. Next question, and I think it's the last one. Oh, we're still up there. Harry, 1208, um, is still in first. Poo is in second, and Huang Li has jumped into third place. Um, Valentin is the highest climber. Here we go then. Last question. This goes back a long time. It happened many blank ago. Planets, moons, suns, stars. This goes back a long time. It happened many blank ago. Come on, guys. I'm expecting great things from you. <laughs> Charmi, well done. Krishna, well done. Yosra, well done. Par, Isa, well done. Oh, fantastic. I am very, very impressed. 157 of you got it right. Moons. It happened many moons ago. Of course, meaning a long time ago. Nice. Well done. Good idiomatic expressions. Um, I'm very pleased, actually. Everybody's been paying attention. That is nice. Let's move on and find out who is the big winner. <laughs> Poo, you're in third place. Bronze medal on the podium. Huang Li is in second. And first, I think I know, Harry1208. Well done, sir. That is absolutely fantastic. This will go down in history as being one of the best quizzes some of the best results it will go down in history guys you're making history i think that's one of the best cahoots we've had i mean referring to your um success rate and correct answers i'm very impressed well done very very nice indeed lovely so now um next we're almost at the end um in the facebook group the other day i shared a picture of something called the library and I wanted to tell you what the library is. I'm going to show you now. It's my latest project. It's something I've been working on um, and it's very very simple but I want to share it with you. You may be interested, you may not be interested, I don't know but let me share it with you. The library is this. Basically I notice a lot of students practice and learn vocabulary by taking a book, reading the words and learning vocabulary. And that's fine. Sometimes they read aloud. But very often the pronunciation is not right because English writing has nothing to do with the pronunciation. It's so different. So I always strongly recommend students to have an audio to listen to the words so when you're repeating them you're getting the correct pronunciation now i'm sure you know that the with the live lessons i take the notes right so i've got all my notes like the notes we've had today right so these notes in the live lessons over here i take that i put it into a pdf and i put it onto the website the website which is the Keith Speaking Academy, by the way, just to make sure you know, I do have the website. So you can go to the Keith Speaking Academy and you can download the notes. But you've still got the same problem, is that you're looking and you're reading aloud. So you're not getting the pronunciation, right? So the website, obviously, is great. You can go to the free live lessons section and there you can download the lesson notes you can click for the pdf or you can just you can sorry you can click to study the lesson or you can download the pdf uh, here and of course when you download it you get it and you can see it so how do we solve the pronunciation problem well with this 
So the library is what I've decided to do is to put together the audio files, a pronunciation file of the live notes. So I take the live lesson notes and I make it into a pronunciation file. Normally about 15 minutes. It's like a mini podcast. You can listen to the pronunciation file and that will help you when you're learning vocabulary to have the correct pronunciation. You can also find the PDFs there um, as well as, do you remember recently I've been doing visualizations where we relax and learn English? I've put all the visualizations in the library and the library is here. Now you can join the library, you can get the, the pronunciation files. I put in an ebook as a bonus and the visualizations so that you can practice English as well. Um, I just explain here why to join it and what you get. Basically, at the moment, there are 10 pronunciation files from the most popular live lessons. At the moment, there are six visualizations and I think the best ebook I've done. It's called Succeed in IELTS Speaking. That's a bit of a bonus. Now, the library I've created, um, what I've decided to do to as a, a way for you to help me is there is a very small fee. So it is paid for, but it's very, very cheap. Um, and it's just if you also want to help support the work that I'm doing, joining the library would be a great way to do it, right? Um, so in there, you've got the ebook, you've got the pronunciation files you can access. You can check them out. You can preview one if you want to check if it's right for you. And it's three dollars. So basically, I'm just putting a very small fee of $3 to join the library. It helps me out an awful lot to help continue doing what I'm doing. Um, and I think it will be a great resource to give you more pronunciation, help and support and to learn lots more English, generally speaking, but also for IELTS speaking. So that's it. It's the library. Um, I'll ask the moderators to share the link. I will put it on the Facebook group and on the website. You'll find links to it as well. Um, so you can follow me on Facebook. You can join the Facebook group if you just search for Keith's Mastermind Community um, and you can find it there and you can join. And if you know if you want to join the library, please do. It would be great um, to see you in there. What I'm going to do is continue adding more stuff. So. If actually, if you get in now, I mean, $3 is pretty cheap. If you get in now, you pay that price forever. It's a one-time payment for life, but you'll get all the stuff that comes in the future. And my guess is as I add more stuff, the price might go up in the future, but you could get it much cheaper now just for $3 if it's right for you, if it's useful for you. So go and check it out. That's it from me, guys. Um, it's been fantastic being here with you all today. Thank you so much for joining me on the live lesson. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I hope the vocabulary around history will help you um, to talk about, well, historic, not historical events, historical events, historical people, um, historic everything and all of that. Um, take care and I will see you next time round. Do remember on Saturday, I've got a recorded video about IELTS speaking part two. It's called Succeeding in IELTS speaking part two. Um, it's a really exciting video because it looks not only at tips, but also the language and the approach. In particular, I talk about a really powerful storytelling technique that you can practice and possibly use in IELTS speaking part two. So that's it. Go and check it out on Saturday. Um, I think that's it from me. Thank you very much for joining. I uh, will see you very, very soon. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.